Don't be afraid to speak up. Ladies, they want to hear from you with these insurance companies because Cody, when I first met him, he told me, he said, Galen, did you know 51% of the licensed insurance agents are women? I said, I didn't know that. At the end of the day, he asked me, how many do you think are in 8% nation? And I said, probably not many. And it's because they don't have the belief system. You see, to me, it's not a man versus woman thing. There's not a glass ceiling because some of the best supporters I have in this business are men. I have the title of wife, grandmother, business partner, but I never, ever, ever want to forget the word that means the most to me, and that's insurance agent. The more you give, the more you get. So ladies, that's what our heart is. And I want to thank you for requesting me to speak. I was blown away when Cody's people called me and said, we got all these women wanting you to speak. And I was telling a real good friend of mine in the audience, Justin Brock this, and he goes, but don't forget us men want to hear you speak too, mama. And so I'm here to speak to you today about what works for me and what I've been able to teach other folks. Well, good morning. Everybody ready for AEP? I haven't heard anybody from the stage ask you that. Are you ready? Are you inspired? I love that this guy was from Arlington. He knows my neighbor, Chris Johnson. So that was kind of awesome getting to hear him speak. You know, one of the things that I think after hearing him that's really important for everybody to take away from this is, you know, in every blessing you're given, or as we say in Texas, and I do talk fast and I talk Southern, so hang on, it'll go fast. But I will tell you that in every blessing, there's a lesson. And in every lesson, there's a blessing. And so I think we've all gotten a great blessing out of all the speakers that I've seen in this conference. But I will tell you, I loved hearing JD talk about his faith. I loved hearing Tim's story talk about who he knows and where he came from. And I absolutely enjoyed Jordan yesterday. I mean, man, what a knockout of the park, Cody Askins. That's great. Okay, so we'll get me off the screen, and I'm not the best technology person. I'm more of the talker in our gig, so we'll, we'll go from there. So this man right here is the best salesman in the world. Better than Jordan, better than me, and he's also my father. He died at 52 years of age. And like a lot of people from the stage say they get choked up when they talk about things, I lost my dad in 1990, but he's the reason I'm on this stage today. He told his little girl, the theme song, Scotty picked it out, that I could do anything I wanted to do. And he asked me what I wanted to do. And here in Texas, we love big hair, bling bling, big heels. But I wanted to be Miss America because in 1969, that's what we knew. We knew Miss America, we knew nurses, we knew teachers, and when y'all lowered the lights, I can't see people, so I'm going to do a Jordan thing. Can we turn those back up for me? So I will say this. The cool thing about being in this business is you can do anything you want to do. You can get a raise anytime you want to. It doesn't matter if you're a career agent. Don't leave. If you're making money, don't let somebody talk you out of leaving. Stay there. Improve your craft, be great. And then when it's time for you to go independent, you'll know. And then you will have that experience. This next word, and I don't know if it's going there. I had a great mentor in my life. She was my first boss. I was the youngest employee hired at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal in the business office. I was 17 years of age. I wanted to go to college, but I want to go to work first. Justin Brock, you know what that's like going to work, buddy? So she told me, she goes, I don't care if you cuss. I don't care if you curse. I don't care if you tell me you're not going to do something, but you better never use the word can't. So when I start working with Cody, he tells me what our message is. And I've got to do this message and it's virtual and I've got to make sure we all stay on the same page. And it said, you can't fail if you don't quit. And I'm like, well, I can't say can't, you know? And so I changed it to a rhyme because everybody thinks I'm, instead of queen of the bundle, Dr. Seuss. But 
you won't fail if you don't quit. And I think that's the message I want to get across to everybody today. Yes, I had this whole pitch prepared because I'm a salesperson first. I have the title of wife, grandmother, business partner, but I never, ever, ever want to forget the word that means the most to me, and that's insurance agent. Because it's been the reason that I've been able to bless my family. And I loved hearing all the speakers talk about how they serve. My business partner and I, we don't have our core values posted, which we're going to do after this conference. But our people that work with us know our core values because we try to live them out every single day. And one of those is service. It's serving others. It's doing the right thing. I had an agent that I've been coaching on Queen of the Bundle the other night ask me. She said, how do you get paid to do what you do? And I go, well, the insurance companies pay us when we have an exclusive product. But we've learned in our business, the more you give, the more you get. So ladies, that's what our heart is. And I want to thank you for requesting me to speak. I was blown away when Cody's people called me and said, we got all these women wanting you to speak. And I was telling a real good friend of mine in the audience, Justin Brock this, and he goes, but don't forget us men want to hear you speak too, mama. And so I'm here to speak to you today about what works for me and what I've been able to teach other folks. This is my husband. We got married in 1986. Um, I'm talking about this because some of the ladies were like, you know, how did you get from where you were to where you are? And I will tell you, it's encouragement. I got asked to speak on a famous podcast about breaking the glass ceiling. I didn't even know what that meant, y'all. I had to Google it, then I had to talk about it. I've never had a glass ceiling because I don't have that barrier in my head. I don't have a barrier in my head. I cannot do anything because I was taught early on that's a bad word. I taught that to my kid. I taught that to my employees. Every employee that starts with us, they're given the lecture. I don't want to hear can. I went down and changed what I call the Brock, we trained the Brock boys, and that was the first thing they heard. I said, we don't say can't. That's the first mistake you make. But I had a husband that encouraged me. What a lot of people don't know, he's 11 years older than me, almost 11 years, but he's a Vietnam vet. And he saw something in me that I didn't always see in myself. And he said, hey, I know you don't want to leave our kid at home with strangers, so I'll stay home, you go work. Now, Vietnam vets, even though Michael Keaton made Mr. Mom famous, a Vietnam vet getting razzed by all of his buddies that you're Mr. Mom and your wife does all this, oh, you got a sugar mama, that's not easy. But he gave me that gift. And our marriage has not always been easy. We have had struggles. But I will tell you what's worked for us, and that is communicating. Our employees will tell you, if we have a moment, we have a moment. It doesn't matter who's around. It happens. And we're good 10 minutes later. 2011, we had our 25th wedding vow renewal. Thank you. And... Those years from 2011 to 2020, there was some rockiness along the way. But I will tell you, our hardest time, and I just see my son in the audience, and I didn't expect him here today. So um, this year was tough for us because I traveled. Those of y'all that follow me know I'm kind of like, where's Galen? And I had to be with him every moment, and he had to be with me every moment. And we had to try to figure out this, what I hate these two words, new normal, because I do not accept this as our normal. But I do accept the fact that we're all being blessed by this time in our life. I've had more time with my grandchildren. I've had more time with my employees. And I've had more time with God. And I will tell you, every morning I wake up, all the women say, what do you do to stay happy all the time? Well, I'm just a naturally happy person. When my son first started working for us, he goes, do you have to be Richard Simmons every morning? Can you just not walk in like the rest of us? But I am a good morning person, but I thank God first for the blessings I have. I write down my goals, and yes, Scotty, I post them on Facebook for the world to know. 
But JD, it's like your accountability chart. You know, before I met my husband, I was kind of raveling out of control. And I met him. He told me I was an obnoxious drunk. And that fixed that. Because, you know, I don't like those two words. And so now I have peace in my life. I have peace because I'm older. I used to be the youngest in the room, and I used to be the only female. That's changed. I'm not the youngest anymore. But on a lot of the advisory councils we sit on, I'm the only female. And Taylor and I, which is my business partner right here, He's very vocal, I'm very vocal, and we keep getting invited back. So speak your mind. Don't be afraid to speak up. Ladies, they want to hear from you at these insurance companies because Cody, when I first met him, he told me, he said, Galen, did you know 51% of the licensed insurance agents are women? I said, I didn't know that. And he's got the video because I say some things that are off color on that. But anyway, at the end of the day, He asked me, how many do you think are an 8% nation? And I said, probably not many. And it's because they don't have the belief system. You see, to me, it's not a man versus woman thing. There's not a glass ceiling. Because some of the best supporters I have in this business are men. Are men. You know, I get credit all the time for things that I didn't even know I did. I watched a video the other day of Justin's on YouTube, and I hadn't seen it in a while because I was watching all of them, liking them all, and I was like, oh, my gosh, all I'll do is watch videos of Justin if I don't do anything else. Just kidding with you, bro. But at the end of the day, he was giving me credit for something that I was like, that's nice, but I don't remember that. You have to support everybody, and they will support you. That's my belief. That's our company's creed. And that's what we're going to continue to do as long as we have senior security benefits. Now, this next picture, I have to give y'all a funny here. So the picture on the right, I posted and said, y'all got to make the right choices in the road. Life's going to be great. My miss positivity. Well, this picture on the left started the biggest fight I've had with my husband in 34 years because we got lost in Yellowstone. And you know whose fault it was? Mine. Because I kept saying we needed to go east. I knew we would end up in Cody, Wyoming eventually. And, you know, it didn't matter that we were staying in little bitty, you know, BFE, Idaho. We would get back there in five or six hours. He didn't like it. But the next day was amazing because we had the best talk we've had in 34 years. And I will happily tell you, I told Taylor when I walked in from my trip, I needed that. My marriage needed that. This business needed that. And as always, he said, I'm glad, gets up, hugs me. Now, this one, Sean, I hate that you're here right now because I'll probably cry. So anyway, this is the best blessing in my life. I was told no children. I was told I had to have emergency hysterectomy at 22. My mom said, no way. She's going to have a baby boy. That next year, October 28th, he came along. Ignore the 80s hair, (laughs) please. But that's been great. He works in our business, and he tries every day to prove that he's not the son of the business person. But we've had a great relationship. He does a great job, and we are so proud to have him in our company. Those of you dealing with mom guilt, I want you to stop. Just stop. Those of you dealing with parent guilt, stop. Your kids are watching what you do. You are instilling in them something that my dad instilled in me. Work ethic. That's what makes you good. Hop and motivation are great, but folks, they're temporary. I can motivate the best. We have a sales meeting every week. Man, they're on fire. They're going to go write 26 apps a week because that's their goal. And then somebody will hit 10. What do I do? What do I say? Don't ask these three over here because they'll tell you I can rock their world sometimes or I'll be that encouraging mom. But at the end of the day, don't have mom guilt. When I talk about support, I have to talk about this man right here. 
You know, when I met Taylor Martin, he had graduated from SMU, and I'd heard about him a lot from the people I was working with prior, because that's who we met, how we met. And when he came to work with us, I was the leader of the company. I was asked to come along as the credibility card so we could hire him. He and I immediately connected. We became great friends. And for a small time, I was his mentor. And I was talking to him the other day about something. Just out of his mouth comes, you still are. Yeah, I go to my office and cry. We will celebrate 20 years next year. That's what makes you great, guys when you partner up with good FMOs. You know, you can read all these websites right now, all the blogs, all the Facebook groups, and you watch people coming down on FMOs. They're the bad guy, they're the antichrist, we're not. We train, we educate, we are always gonna give you, hopefully, more than you ever expected. But we are gonna get so much more. So thank you, Taylor, I appreciate you. So, next one, friends in this business. Oh my gosh, our best friends are who we work with every day. This picture up in the top right, we formed this thing, it was Taylor's idea a couple of years ago. Y'all, some of our biggest competitors are in that picture. Biggest competitors. Now, when you're on the speaker circuit, a lot of these guys up here were competitors. They're all trying to get the next gig, the best speaking engagement. But yet, I notice that they all complement each other. They're all talking great about them. Some of you are pictured here. Some of our best friends are company insurance executives. This next slide right here, you know, I got to travel last year with a bunch of my friends. We hashtagged ourselves, just the 10 of us. Oh, I went the wrong way, so I gotta go red, right? There you go. So, Justin Brock and I, a lot of other friends. You see Bradley Hannon there. You know, I've got so many friends. Yesterday, young man comes up to me. I couldn't wait to meet you. And my only deal with Scotty was he had to introduce me to you. Josh, it was a pleasure to meet you last night. Tons of friends in this audience. We, I don't know if the Finkins are here, but man, long time relationship with those guys. So this next slide, and I'm driving too fast because I'm trying to stay in my time. Real queens fix each other's crowns. You know the reason women don't get along? Because of a guy. True story. I will tell you this though, when I quit worrying about what other women thought of me, I ended up going to the top of the leaderboard by their support, by them wanting me to train them. You see Rebecca Davis in this picture. I met her last night. We got the best compliment ever. This guy goes, I think it was Andrew Lee. Y'all been friends forever. And I was like, no, actually, we only met three months ago. First time I met Rebecca, I was at her ranch, and we'd been talking forever on Facebook and all the great stuff, and she said, I don't really have a mentor in this business. Would you be my mentor? And I said, absolutely. Compliment last night was, you're even sweeter than I thought you were. That's real queens fixing each other's crowns. Those two little girls in that picture are my granddaughter and Justin Brock's daughter. My hope is that when they see women like us, mothers like us, leaders like us, they're not talking about being Miss America. They're talking about being a CEO of their own company. They're talking about, hey, I got a husband over here who loves me and supports me. I heard Brad Hannon introduce his wife as she's the rock star of the family. I hear Cody Askins talk about Lauren Askins like she's the rock star of the family. I hear Sean Hendricks talk about his wife, Shauna Hendricks, rock star of the family. And I will go to the next slide. This is my team. I love these people. I have them with my family because they are my family. They're who I'm with more than I am anybody else. 
They love us. They put us before them. I see employees during AEP, I will drive by the office and there will be cars there at 11 o'clock at night. I'm going in with the skinniest of teams in this COVID period because I didn't know what to expect because you can't hire good people right now because they're lazy. They're earning $600 a week on their iPhone and they're happy. How can you live on $600 a week? I mean, you can't have this bling and this hair and these nails and these toes and these eyelashes making $600 a week. And guess what? Our men want all this stuff. They gripe about it being on the credit card, but they want you looking good, don't they, Amy? Don't you, Steve? Yeah, I know. Y'all like us looking good. Okay, this one right here. This is our operations officer. She's also my daughter-in-law. The best compliment you get as a boss, a mom, a young woman saying, hey, I appreciate you're going to pay for my college, Galen, but I don't want to go to college. I want to go to the school of Galen Hendricks, and I want to do what you do. And so she started with our company in 2005, with a brand new baby, and our team will tell you she can be mean to me because she doesn't want to spend in our money foolishly. Not because she doesn't love me, because she does. That, for you that are got family in the business, there's nothing better. Yeah, there's arguments. I was talking to Devin Blunt about the challenges of family members. There's always going to be a challenge. But you would have that same challenge if you were working at XYZ Company. It's just easier to put that in your head. Oh, it's because we work together. Oh, it's because we live together. I'm not giving up a 34-year marriage, disappointing my son, my grandchildren, because you, and I'll use the Jordan word, because you pissed me off for five minutes. But marriage is hard. There's reasons to get divorced. But our divorce rate is 67%. It's because people are looking for instant gratification. If you're in this business, it's not instantly gratifying. Those of you that are working hard are going to have gratification because you work hard. The woman in this picture, she may be my daughter-in-law by title, but in my heart, she's my daughter. And I'm always going to show how she can be better. Women, show your employees. Rebecca Davis has an office full of women. Show them to be what you are. You're one of the hardest workers I know. Hard work, by the way, is a good thing. It's a good thing. If it was called fun, it would be spelled F-U-N. It's spelled W-O-R-X. W-O-R-K for a reason. I did graduate. You know, I will tell you, I didn't get a college degree. Everybody thinks it. Ty Woldridge at Aetna thought it until about six months ago and still says, where'd you go to college? I didn't. I went to the College of Hard Knocks and Galen Hendricks, Taylor Martin. I learn every day from someone. But I went to school for the social hour, and I will tell you, most of our employees will tell you, that our business would not be what it is without the relationships that we have cultivated because of that heart to serve. When you have a big heart, people see it, and they want to work with you. That's why y'all want to be with the Askins. That's why y'all want to be with people that are on this stage that have a heart, that have been through hard times. I can tell y'all my hard times. I'm not supposed to have a house in Alito like I do, based on what people say. I'm not supposed to have the ring I have, based on what people say. I'm not supposed to have a ranch, based on what people say. But it took me 35 years almost to get there. And you know what? I would not trade one of those years for anything. Even last year, hard year on me. You know, when you're on top, man, you think the guys are brutal. Woohoo! Watch out for the women. 
You know, we've got to be better at supporting each other. Me, Lauren, and Rebecca were talking last night about how to get everybody together and get them going. And I told Cody, my dream for this conference is to have more women on this stage, more women in the 8% nation. So why do I, how, what, what inspires me? What inspires me? These kiddos. You know, I love being a mom because I didn't think it was going to happen. And I was talking about mom guilt. You know what the most popular place was in Arlington, Texas? Our house. All of his friends chose to hang out at our house. So if I was doing such a bad job working 65 hours a week, why did every other child that he hung out with want to be with Galen on the weekends, want to be with Galen and Dan at the ball games, want to be with Galen and Dan at Hooters? Okay, that's why. But I will tell you, they were there because when we were there, we were there. We were present. When I got off of that airplane at 5 o'clock from Phoenix or 5 o'clock from Fort Lauderdale or 5 o'clock from Harlingen, Texas, I was with my child until I got on the airplane Monday morning. Priorities will build your kids into good people, but you have to prioritize them. Okay, we talk about the things that inspire me. Hey, I, Cody Askins, I bleed blue and silver, as you know. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, but there is nothing more exciting than watching your grandson play his first high school football game the night of this conference, winning 40-0 to zero with a school that has eight state championships. Nine. So, nine. Okay. You know what? We started back with the word can't. I kept sitting there going, okay, I shouldn't miss the conference. I should be on time, but I can't miss this ball game. But you know what I did instead? I call Andy, who, which by the way, is with Cody Askins team. If y'all have not met him, he's a rock star. And I said, yep. And I said, Andy, I'm going to be there, but I'm going to this football game because that's important. So don't say can't, say can, but. Can instead. By the way, that boy you're seeing right there is 14 years old. We do make them big in Texas. <laughs> this is my granddaughter. I'm trying to make a way for all of your daughters, all of your granddaughters. And I'm not talking to just the women. I'm talking to Grace Marie's dad. I'm talking to all of you that have daughters. Instill in them greatness. Show them hard work. I watched my dad work three jobs until I was five years old. And we never had anything. You know, anytime you got a motivational speaker, and I used to do the same thing, I told everybody about all my challenges and how broke we were and all that stuff. But you know what? The truth of the matter is I love beans and fried potatoes and cornbread, and if I have to go back there, I'm okay with that. Because I've had to build and rebuild five times in my career. That's what makes you good. You got staying power, but you're making an example for these people that matter in your life. My dad used to tell me two things and they are right. No was spelt backwards. You get three no's, it's on to the next. What did Jordan say yesterday? You prospect, you sift through. Don't let those neg you out. Let those make you better. Move on. And he also said, the people that you can call in the middle of the night to come get you from wherever you may be, I won't say jail, but most of y'all go there. Those are your people. Those are the people that are going to encourage you. My family and my family. I always tell Taylor Martin, you don't have the Hendrix blood, but you have the Hendrix heart. And he supports me. He puts up with a lot of my crap. And I'm pretty easy most of the time these days. But I used to be high strung. If y'all think I'm high strung right now, no, 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 no. They can tell you high strung. But these are my people. This is what keeps me humble. 
I want everybody in this picture to watch me serve. I never have to ask my son and daughter-in-law to give to the Ronald McDonald House. They just do. It's because of what they've seen. It's because of the people they are. And our whole company, Scotty's given money, Taylor's given money. They join any bandwagon I have. So guys, I will tell you this. Write down Queen of the Bundle. Go like the page. If we can ever help you understand how to be a better cross-selling agent, you want to raise your income 30%, call us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Cody Askin. Are you tired of missing deals? Do you feel like you miss sales that you should be closing? Do you feel like leaving money on the table every time you talk to someone? My name is Cody Askins, and I'm excited on December 11th to spend the day with you and Coach Michael Bird on our Super Selling Masterclass. We're going to go through the sales process. How do you transition from one part of the process to the next? When you get to the close, what are the words you shouldn't be using? What are the phrases you should be using? And how do you keep from creating doubt in the customer's mind? If these are problems that you struggle with, we are going to make sure that you never struggle with them again. Super Selling Masterclass, December 11th, Coach Bird and I are gonna walk through the sales system, the sales process, the sales cycle, and how you close more deals more often every single time. And I'm super excited to spend time with you on December 11th. So make sure that we see you on December 11th. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. So you brand first, then you market. Then you distribute. And I didn't really understand this. I just thought if I became a great coach, people would just come running, right? What if I told you it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows it? How many of you think you're the best kept secret?